This is the 18th video in our series, looking at how you set up and configure a Synology NAS running DiStation Manager 7. While it's very convenient to use iCloud or Google Drive to back up the photos and videos you've taken on your smartphone or tablet, over time the cost of online storage can become expensive. So in this video, we're going to take a look at how you install and configure Synology Photos so that it can act as an alternative way to store your important memories. If you have been following the other videos in this series, you will know that currently our Synology NAS has not yet been configured so that it can be accessed remotely over the internet. So after we install and configure Synology Photos, as long as our smartphone or tablet is connected to our home network, that device can be set up so that it can back up photos and videos to our NAS. Then in a future video, we will make our NAS remotely accessible through the internet so that Synology Photos will be able to act as a cloud backup for our smartphones and tablets. In order to install Synology Photos, we first need to sign into DiStation Manager using our administrator's credentials. Now from the desktop of the DSM, if we open Package Center, as there are numerous packages that can be installed onto our NAS, to more quickly find photos, we're going to select the drop down arrow next to all packages and from the list choose multimedia. From the smaller list of applications being displayed, we're going to locate Synology Photos and choose install. Synology Photos will now download and install onto our NAS. However, unlike the other applications that we've installed so far, Photos will require that we also install node.js and Synology Application Service. Node.js is simply a server environment that allows photos to handle file requests, while Synology Application Service is a framework that allows push notifications and helps with profile settings. After selecting Yes, Node.js, Synology Application Service, and Photos are installed onto our NAS. It should be noted that if your NAS has been configured with multiple volumes, it will be at this point that you will be asked which volume you wish to install photos onto. However, as our NAS has only been configured with a single volume, the photos package will automatically install itself onto volume one. We will know that Synology Photos has been installed when the install button changes to open. Let's now configure Synology Photos. If we close Package Center and open Control Panel, under System, we have an option called Login Portal. When we select Login Portal, we will find a number of tab settings. By choosing Applications, we can see a list of the Synology applications that we currently have installed on our NAS. This includes the numerous ways that we can remotely access these applications. So we're going to need to configure these settings to Domain, HTTP, HTTPS, and Alias. Let's highlight Photos and choose Edit. In order to access Photos, we will need to use either the IP address or domain name of our NAS, along with the port number for Photos. However, as port numbers are not easily remembered, we can also assign a word to create an alias that will make opening photos easier. For this example, we will use the word photo as our alias for Synology Photos. Then when we open the application from within a web browser, rather than using a port number, we can type the IP address of our NAS, a forward slash, and then the word photo. In customized port HTTP and HTTPS, we will use the default port numbers that Synology suggests. After selecting Save, the options we've created for linking to Synology Photos are displayed. As Photos is a personal application that we're adding to our NAS, we will need to set application privileges in order to define who can and cannot access this service. So if we locate Application Privileges from the sidebar and then select it, under Packages, we will find listed Synology Photos. 
if we highlight Synology Photos and then choose Edit, we can then either by username or group set who is or is not allowed to access our instance of photos. As we want all of our users to be able to use Synology Photos, we're going to select Group and then tick the checkbox for Users under the heading Allow. Next, because Photos will use a user's home folder in order to save photographs and videos to our NAS, before we close Control Panel, it's worth checking that User Home Services is enabled. So once again, from the sidebar, if we select User and Group, then in the main panel, choose Advanced. By scrolling down to the bottom of the panel, we will find a heading called User Home. Under this heading, we need to ensure that User Home Service is enabled in order for Synology Photos to work correctly. With Synology Photos now configured on our NAS, we are ready to take a look at the Synology Photos app and see how it works. Before we start, we strongly recommend that you make a full backup on a secondary computer or external USB hard drive of all of the photos and videos on your phone or tablet. That way, if something should go wrong while using Synology Photos, you will not permanently lose any of your important memories. While the Android and iPhone versions of Synology Photos are basically the same, the Android version of the Photos app is currently missing an important feature. So we're going to take a look at configuring both versions of the app and then try and demonstrate where the two applications diverge. Let's start with the Android version of the Synology Photos app. When we first open the app, we're asked to accept or skip the privacy agreement. We now need to enter either the domain name or the IP address of our NAS. However, as our NAS is not currently accessible remotely through the internet, we're going to use the local IP address of our NAS. We now need to sign into the Synology Photos app using a standard user account that we've already created on our NAS. After entering our username and password, we're going to remove the tick from HTTPS. This is because Synology Photos is currently using a self-signed SSL certificate and is only accessible through our home network and not the internet. So rather than having to deal with connection issues that might arise from using a self-signed SSL certificate, for now we will use HTTP, and then when we eventually make our NAS accessible through the internet, we will create and use a valid SSL certificate so that applications like Synology Photos will become more secure. After signing in, we're asked if we want to enable Photo Backup, to which we're going to say yes. We noticed that while making this video, when you choose the option Not Now, the Photo app will revert to allowing us to manually sync photos and videos to our NAS. However, while this feature works correctly on our iPhone, on an Android handset, it would work once and then no longer give us the option to sync new photos or videos. We now need to allow the Photos app to access our phone. As you can see, we have two backup options. Backup new photos only, and backup all photos. As the phone that we are currently using does not have photos or videos stored on it, we're going to choose backup new photos only. However, if you already have photos stored on your handset, you might want to select the option, backup all photos. For all the other settings here, we will leave them on their defaults, which means that our phone will only back up our photographs and videos if the app is open and we are wirelessly connected to our home network. After selecting Done, we are presented with the main screen for photos. So if you already have photographs and videos stored on your phone, they will slowly start to appear as they are uploaded to your NAS. As our phone is currently empty, let's take a photograph to see how photos works. If we open the camera app, and take a photograph. When we return to the Synology Photos app, we need to wait for Photos to pull our photograph from the phone's local memory, and then because our phone is connected to our NAS over our wireless network, have our photograph automatically sync with our NAS. 
Let's now return to Distation Manager and take a look at where the Photos app has saved our photograph. As we are currently signed into the DSM with our administrator's credentials, we first need to sign out and then sign in using the same user account credentials that we used to sign into the Synology Photos app. Now that we are in our user account, if we open File Station and from the sidebar choose Home, we should find a subfolder called Photos. Within Photos, we will then have a folder called Mobile Backup that contains a folder named after the device that we used to take our photograph. As we used an Android handset, we then have a folder called DCIM, which contains a folder called Camera, which then has subfolders for different years. Within each yearly folder, we then have additional subfolders for the months when a photograph or video was taken. Let's confirm that our photograph has been backed up. If we now jump over to an iPhone version of the Synology Photos app and take another photograph, when we return to the gallery view, because we are using the same user account that we used to sign into the Android version of Synology Photos, our new photograph is simply added to our existing photo. So yes, a Synology Photos account will support the backup of videos and photos from multiple devices. However, you may have noticed that unlike the Android version of Photos, the iPhone version will briefly display a syncing icon that will change to a cloud icon to inform us that our photo has been backed up. Where the two versions of the Synology Photos app seem to diverge is with a feature called Free Up Space. As far as we can tell, originally both the Android and the iPhone version of the Synology Photos app had an option that would allow us to recover storage space on a handset once a backup had been made. If we select more, we are presented with a number of secondary options. While most of these options are the same as in the Android version of Synology Photos, the option Free Up Space currently seems to be exclusive to Apple devices. Let's select Free Up Space and take a look at what it does. At the moment, any photograph or video that was taken either on an iPhone or Android handset will be stored in three places. The first is in the internal storage of our handset. The second is in a thumbnail cache in the Synology Photos app. And the third is a backup copy of our photos and videos that are stored on our NAS. So in order to free up space on our iPhone and allow us to take more photos, we're going to use the free up space option. Let's select clear all. We are now prompted to confirm that we wish to delete the photograph that is saved to the storage on our iPhone. However, it should be noted that this photo will also be deleted from iCloud. So the Synology Photo app will be taking full responsibility for backing up all of our personal photos and videos. Let's see what happens when we select delete. Within free up space, we're now informed that we have no backed up photos or videos to clear. And if we return to the gallery, the photo we took on our iPhone is still present in Synology Photos. However, as our photo has been deleted from our iPhone storage, it is no longer present in the native Apple Photos app or in iCloud. As the free up space option is not available on the Android version of the Synology Photos app, we're going to take a look at how you manually free up space in Android. If we jump over to an Android handset and then take another photograph, when we return to the Synology Photos app, we first need to allow the app to back up our new photo. While we can now select more to confirm that our photo has been backed up, as you can see, we have no option to free up space. So before we manually delete files from this phone, let's double check that our NAS has a backup copy of our photo by accessing the web version of Synology Photos. If we return to the station manager on our computer and sign out of our user account, in the address bar, 
if we type the IP address of our NAS, followed by a forward slash, and then the word photo. When we press enter on our keyboard, we are presented with the login screen for Synology Photos. Now by using the same user credentials that we used in order to sign into the Synology Photos app, we are presented with the Photos home screen for that user. While we could use the mobile backup link to check that our photos have been backed up, instead we're going to select albums from the sidebar and use recently added to check to see if our photo is stored on our NAS. With confirmation that our photo has been backed up, if we return to our Android handset, we can manually delete the copy of our photo that is saved to our phone storage. If we open the camera app on our phone, and then select the photo gallery, after finding our photograph, and then deleting it from our phone storage, when we return to the Synology Photos app, while our photo has been removed from the storage on our Android handset, it remains a cached file in the Synology Photos app, and a physical file on our NAS. However, as the Synology Photos app is now also the gatekeeper for our photos and videos, if we delete something from within Synology Photos, that file will be deleted from both our handset and our backup. Before we finish up, there are a couple of caveats that you need to be aware of with regards to Synology Photos. The first is that in order for your smartphone to backup photos and videos to your NAS, you will need to have the Synology Photos app open which in turn will affect the battery life of your handset. The second caveat is that because our NAS is currently only accessible from within our local network, Synology Photos is only able to back up videos and photos when our smartphone or tablet is wirelessly connected to our home network. So in order to change this behavior, we will need to make our NAS accessible from the internet, which is something that we will be looking at doing in a future video. To summarize, in this video, we took a look at how you install and configure Synology Photos. To do this, we first installed Synology Photos onto our NAS and configured the login portal and application privileges so that our users will have permission to use the application. We then installed the Synology Photos app onto a smartphone and demonstrated how the iPhone and Android versions of the software differ. In the next video in this series, we're going to take a look at how we make backups using an application called Hyper Backup.